everyone. Thanks for joining us at First Kid City Online. Our theme this July is ready, set, move. Follow Jesus here, there, and everywhere. Have you ever played a game of Simon Says? I know I have. The goal of the game is pretty simple, right? You do whatever Simon says to do. It sounds easy, but sometimes it's not. The person leading the game might say, Simon says to hop on one leg. So you start hopping on one leg. Then the person might say, Simon says stop. So then you stop. Next, it might be Simon says to run in place. So you run in place. But then the person may say stop and you stop. But then you realize Simon never actually told you to stop. Even though you did your best to follow Simon in the game, it got confusing and you made a mistake. Thankfully, when we follow Jesus, he doesn't trick us or mislead us. God is with us and we have faith that he will always lead us in the right direction. God is good and he will never leave us or forsake us. At First Kid City, we study a life app every month. And you might be wondering, what is a life app? A life app is what God is doing in us to change the world around us. This month, our life app is faith, trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. Life is full of surprises. You might have no idea where God is leading you next. In those times, there is no need to fear. You can always have faith and trust that God is good. He is loving and faithful, and God will always lead you in the way that you need to go. At First Kid City, we believe it's so important to memorize scripture because we love God's word. This month, we're studying Ephesians 2, 8. Let's read it together. God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Your salvation doesn't come from anything you do. It is God's gift. Great job to memorize this verse Ask your parents to help you come up with some motions. Work together as a family to see who can come up with the best motions that will help you memorize this verse. When you finish, you should make a video of the whole family using the motions and saying this verse together. As part of our worship today, we will be taking communion. So if you have bread and juice available, you may go ahead and prepare that right now. But if you don't have bread and juice, that's okay. Whatever you have in your kitchen will work. You can pause this video now to get your communion ready. Come back when you're ready to go. Fantastic. We can't wait to jump into God's word today. But before we get started, let's have some fun with game time. Hey guys, welcome to game time. My name's Grant. And my name's Mitchell. And we got a great game plan for you today. And uh, Metro, what's the, what's the game? Today's game is called Pencil Flip. To play Pencil Flip, all you do is put a pencil on your hand like this, you flip it and try to catch it. Every time you successfully catch a, catch a pencil, you put another one on your hand and you keep on going, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Not like that. <laughs> Not like that. But every time you catch a pencil, you put one more. So now I have two. And since I caught that to those, I'd go up to three. But if you drop any of your pencils, then you need to start back at one. And at the end of one minute, we try to see who can fit the most pencils at once. All right, sounds like a plan. If you want to play along with us, all you need is some pencils. And yeah, let's get started. You ready, Mitchell? I'm ready, Grant. All right. All right. Three, two, one, go. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, Whoa. nice, Grant. This is kind of a lot more difficult this than is I really, thought it would yeah, be. Oh, no. Mm. Oh, way to go, Grant. Let's go. The heck, Grant, stuff. Oh, no. No. Oh, oh shoot. <laughs> Wait, that's cheating. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I had like two pieces right here. No. No. Six, <laughs> no. Four, three, two, one. No, man. Yes. Good job, Grant. Well Thanks, played. Mitchell. Uh, well played, well played. Be sure to send in videos and pictures of you playing along and maybe next week we'll put those in the video. Now let's get ready to worship, here we go. When I was searching 
Your love was never far You made a way to get to me You were the whisper Leading me to your heart Forever I belong to you continue our time of worship today by taking communion, the Lord's Supper, together. If you have already prepared your bread and juice, that's great. If you don't have bread and juice available right now, whatever you have on hand is perfect. As we begin this time together, we remember that God's people have gathered to take this meal for many years. During this time, God's people always do two things. We remember Jesus and we celebrate Jesus. Jesus entered our world as a baby, but he grew up and performed miracles. He taught people about God's kingdom. He healed the sick. He served others. Jesus never once sinned. He lived a completely perfect life. Jesus came to redeem us, to save us from our sins by dying on a cross. On the night before he was arrested, Jesus gathered his disciples together for a Passover meal. As they were eating, Jesus did something a little out of the ordinary. He took some bread, broke it into a bunch of pieces, and passed it out to his friends. He told his friends that the bread represented his body, that they should eat it in remembrance of him. Then Jesus took a cup and told them that this was his blood of the covenant, poured out for the forgiveness of sins. This seemed kind of odd, but Jesus was starting something new. On the same day when Jewish people celebrated their freedom from Egypt, how God led them to the promised land, Jesus started a new day to remember and celebrate. 
a day when all people would be free from sin and death. In just a few short hours, Jesus would be arrested and crucified. He would get the punishment for the sins that we committed. It was a terrible thing. But because of what Jesus did, we no longer have to be separated from God. We are free to live with him wholly and completely. We remember the life that Jesus led, how he never sinned, his amazing teachings and miracles, and we celebrate how he died for our sins and three days later rose again in the resurrection, defeating sin and death forever. And all of God's people to this day gather together and share this meal as one family in Christ. Today, if you would like to remember and celebrate Jesus with us, we invite you to take communion at home right now. One of the most important things you can do to love Jesus is to love God's heart. At First Kids City, that's just how we talk about prayer. Prayer is simply sharing your heart with God and letting Him share His heart with you. It's like talking to a close friend or a relative. Today, we are going to pray together as a family. I'm going to pray over us, and when I'm finished, we will all say amen together, which simply means I agree. I encourage you to go ahead and get into a posture of prayer at home right now. The position of our bodies can impact the position of our hearts toward God. Feel free to get down on your knees, lay face down on the floor, stand with your hands reaching out toward God, or even just fold your hands and close your eyes. All right, are you ready? Let's pray together. Father, today we come before you to worship. We thank you for everyone who is tuning in today to worship with us. We ask your blessing be on all of us as we learn from your word. Open our eyes to see the truth, and may we learn to love like Jesus. And all God's kids say, amen. Now, let's get ready to hear a message from God's Word. Okay. Okay, props, costumes, uh, facial hair. Uh, what am I missing? John! Where? Oh, yeah! <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. Brandon, are you ready for this? I think so. Are you? Didn't you just hear me when I came in? I... Oh, yeah! <laughs> so, yes? Yes. Oh. Is there anything else that needs to be done? Yeah, I, I, I just need to organize everything to make sure oh, that's all organized. Right. Organize, we got this. Uh, yeah, but I just need to put it. We couple... got this! We got this. Ladies and gentlemen, the So and So Show presents the whole Bible. This goes over here. <laughs> oh yeah! In the beginning, there was darkness. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light, and God saw that it was good. And then God created everything else, the sky. The ground, plants, the sun and the moon, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and then God made every kind of animal. He and God saw that it was good. <laughs> it was paradise. Then, on the sixth day, God saved the best for last. God created people, and they were created in God's own image. Hi, I'm Adam. That's Eve. Hey, wait, isn't this the fruit God told us not to eat? Uh-oh. After Adam and Eve broke God's rule, they were banished from paradise. Their relationship with God was 
broken. It's a bummer. But even when people disobeyed God, God still loved them. Yeah, God still loved them. In fact, many years after Adam and Eve, God chose a man named Abraham to give a very important promise. Oh, I'm so old. It sure is hard to be old. I wish my wife and I had had children to take care of us now that we are so old. But we didn't, and we never will, because we're too old. Abraham. Yes, Lord. I will make you into a great nation. All nations on earth will be blessed because of you. I'm old, and I don't have any children. But I believe you, Lord. I have a son. I'll call you Isaac. God's promise to Abraham started to come true. Abraham's family was growing into a great nation. They were God's chosen people. Isaac had children and grandchildren. One of his grandchildren was named Joseph. La 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 la! I'm Joseph. I had a dream where I saw all my brothers bowing down to me. <laughs> Joseph's brothers didn't like him very much, so they beat him, had him thrown in a well, and sold into slavery. But my, my, my dream. And they took his coat. No, oh, that's mine. Don't I know this is part of this. It's part of the story. Give it. Ah. Uh, the Lord was with Joseph, no matter where he was. And he went from slavery to the second most powerful leader in Egypt. So God's people, the Israelites, moved to Egypt. Let my people go! Too soon, too soon. Oh. Oh. While in Egypt, the Israelites multiplied, and the Egyptian king Pharaoh had them enslaved. Let my people Still go! Still too soon, too soon. God spoke to a man named Moses from a burning bush, telling him to free the people. So Moses went to Pharaoh and said, Moses went to Pharaoh and said, well, Let my people go! But Pharaoh said, No! Please. No! Pretty please. No! Come on. No! Sugar on top? No! All right. So God sent ten plagues on the land of Egypt until finally Pharaoh set the Israelites free. Yeah, but as they were leaving, Pharaoh changed his mind and sent an army after the Israelites. Yeah, but God made a way for them to escape. God parted the Red Sea, and the Israelites were able to walk through like it was dry land. And then they wandered around for 40 years. Where God gave them the law, which told them how to treat each other. 40 years! Okay, but after the desert, uh, God gave the people a king. Oh, yeah. King Saul. Yeah, how'd that turn out? Uh, um, the, the, the second king God chose was a, a shepherd boy named David. Right, this yes. is a good part. Okay. <sighs> David was anointed the next king even while King Saul was still in charge. And he was extremely popular because he was brave enough to fight a giant named Goliath. I will fight you in the name of the Lord. But I'm a giant and you are just... Oh, my rib. Ah. I win. Yeah. David was a king after God's own heart. But he made a bunch of mistakes. And eventually, his family and the kingdom of Israel was split apart. <laughs> he couldn't let me have this. No, that's just what happened. No, it seems like only bad stuff happened. No, good stuff happened too. I mean, remember the story of Daniel? Oh, you mean the guy who was kidnapped and raised in another country his whole life? Yeah, but, yeah, but he followed God the whole time. Which got him thrown into a lion's den. But he survived. <sighs> hey, okay, okay, you want good news? What about the, the prophecies of Isaiah? A child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. You know who that's about, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. God promised to send a savior. And then hundreds of years later. Hundreds a, of years? Yeah, I know it was a long time. Hundreds of years! No, but you're not listening to the important hundreds part. Hundreds of, of years! Okay. Hundreds! I'm going to need some help. It's Bible story time with Kellen! More than 100! I didn't think you guys would need me today. I thought you were telling the whole Bible yourself. We didn't quite make it through the whole Bible. Oh, how far did you get? 
Hundreds of years, Kellen. There. Oh, you didn't even get to the New Testament. That has some of the best parts. Jesus was born. In a feeding trough for animals. Yeah, but that just shows us that Jesus came for everyone. He grew up and performed all kinds of miracles too. He taught things in a way that no one had ever taught before. He showed us how to love one another. Yeah, and then what happened? Well, Jesus died. But he died to pay for the sins of the world. He died to save us. Yeah, and then Jesus came back from the dead. Yep, and he gave his followers a mission to tell his story to the whole world and a promise to be with them to the very end. Yeah, and then what happened? Well, Jesus was taken up into the clouds. <laughs> okay, I get it. In this big, amazing story that God is telling, there are a lot of ups and downs. It's like a roller coaster. The story of our own lives can feel like that too, right? We have our ups, good things happen to us that make us feel happy, and we have our downs, things we wish didn't happen that make us angry or upset. But I'll let you in on a little secret. I believe I know how the story will end. Come again. This huge story God started has a huge ending too. And God gave us a clue on what that just might be. Oh, then uh, take it away, Kellen. Like I said, before Jesus left, he gave his disciples a mission to tell the world about him. And he gave them a promise to always be with him. The promise came true when God sent the Holy Spirit to be with everyone who put their faith in Jesus. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, the disciples could take their mission very seriously. They started churches, they wrote letters, they traveled all over the world to tell people about Jesus. One of these disciples was named John. When John was very old, he lived on an island called Patmos. When the Holy Spirit gave him a vision, he heard a loud voice that sounded like a trumpet burr, 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 that said, write on a scroll what you see, send it to the seven churches in Asia Minor. You can read for yourself what John wrote in the Bible. It's in a book we call Revelation. In his vision, John saw a lot of things that, that are hard to understand, but they pointed to what the end of the story will look like. A time where God will make all the wrong things in the world right. And here's what John heard and saw. I heard a loud voice from the throne. It said, look, God now makes his home with the people. He will live with them. They will be his people. And God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death and there will be no more sadness. There will be no more crying or pain. Things are no longer the way they used to be. He who was sitting on the throne said, I am making everything new. That's hard to imagine, isn't it? There will be no more sadness? Really? There won't be anything to be sad about? And no more pain either? That's what John heard. Think of it. In this world, we all struggle. And we know other people who struggle. People who are sick or hungry. People who don't have homes. There are wars and famine and brokenness all over the world. But at the end of the story, God will fix everything that is broken. God will make everything new. Whoa. So when we see or experience the bad stuff in life, we can have faith that God will make everything right in the end. Yep. That's an epic ending, Kellen. Thank you so much. Hey, <laughs> no problem. I'll see you next time. You feeling better? Oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Great. Hey, sometimes you got to think ahead, you know? Uh, the here and now can get kind of hard, but it's really inspiring to think of what God has in store next with heaven and making everything new. Yeah, it's fun to dream about. In fact, yeah. Reveal the question. What do you think heaven will be like? Oh, that's easy. Lots of clouds, gold, everyone will have a harp. 
You watch a lot of cartoons. I do. I don't know. I, I've always imagined that it will be really bright, you know, like light everywhere. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. That's very cool. Hey, and what about you? What do you think heaven will be like? Yeah, talk about it together, and we'll see you next time on The So-and-So Show. Yeah, you know, I'm feeling pretty good now. You want to tell the whole Bible again? I think we're out of time. Nah, come on. Come on. Ah, we got this. Ah. We got this. See you next time. In the beginning, it was dark. God said, let there be light. Yeah, then God made everything! Caca! Ah, uh, caca! Adam and Eve broke the rules. Ah. Mm, mm. But God still loved people. And chose Abraham. I'm old. Hi! You're gonna have a baby. Oh, nope, not twins. You're Isaac. <laughs> I'm Isaac. I'm Isaac's grandson, Joseph. Give me that coat. Okay. Moses! No! Oh. Let my people go! Moses! <laughs> no, David! David! David, David killed the lion! Oh. Oh. Ooh. Are you alright? It was just a beard. Brandon? Oh yeah! <laughs> Revelation! Yeah, we made it. Good job. All the way through. That was great. Thanks for joining us today on First Kid City Online. We have so many exciting things happening at First Church, so you can check that out at firstchurchok.com events. We'll see you next time.